Hey everyone, I don't know if you've heard about Anchor yet, but it is definitely the easiest way uh, for you to make a podcast. It's what we use here at Fantasy Six Pack as well. Uh, One of my favorite parts is that it's my favorite price to use, which is absolutely free. It's got this creation tool that I love. It allows you to record from your computer, of course, but uh, believe it or not, you can actually do it from your phone. So that's pretty awesome. And then Anchor does the work for you as far as distributing your podcast so it can be heard on Spotify, on iTunes, and many more places. And you can even make a little bit of money on your podcast if you're good enough. So it's got everything you need in one place. Go ahead and download the free Anchor app, or you can go ahead and go to anchor.fm to get started. We are back here at the On Deck Circle podcast. I'm one of your very, well, I'm your only handsome host. I'm one of your hosts, Nick Z. You can find me on Twitter at nzanaboni93. That's pretty much it. That's really all I got today. Uh, Oh, wait. Nope. Big news. Red Sox, my Boston Red Sox, have made it to the ALCS, and they're going to play the Houston Astros. I would love to say that I was confident against them versus the Rays, but I wasn't. I was expecting a sweep. But, hey, we're here. We love it. I'm excited. Boston's excited about baseball, which is also cool. It's probably because the Patriots suck. But, hey, whatever. All right. For now, right now, I want to call in my guy, Mr. Jason Beckner. And there he is. What's cracking, man? Nick, right. Nick, congratulations to your uh, Red Sox. Making it makes no sense. Series. I know, I know we were talking a little bit before the show, and I'm actually, yeah, I'm really shocked they uh, pulled it off against, you know, the best team in the AL, so. Now, who's your, what's your team now, since? I like, mean, who you, who you I really want are. the Giants. Obviously, I have some ties there with Chris Bryant. Yep, um, okay. But Kyle Schwarber? This is true. Um, I'm just AL. fine. Here. So now that the Sox are, you know, got embarrassed by the Astros this weekend, um I think in the AL, I you know, I think I got to go Boston, man. Nobody right. wants to see these Houston no. jumps in the, the and Rose like Rangers. this Sox team is so likable, like legitimately, yeah. like they're they're either hot or they're garbage, and right now they're hot, which makes me think they might just fucking win the whole thing. Yeah, and then sometimes that's what happens in baseball. You know what I mean? Like there's so many. I can't remember the last time, but there's definitely been times where that wild card team, yeah, you know, they're it's, the hottest it's team. Like, it's like the hot goalie. If you yeah. run into a hot goalie in hockey, you're screwed. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, Boston's been playing wild card slash like playoff baseball yeah. for the last couple of weeks already. Yeah. So they're ready to yeah. roll. Yeah. I mean, they've they've been ready. They're hot. They're you know, they can catch fire again and just Houston's gonna be a little bit bigger of a monster, oh, but for sure. <laughs> yeah. But it'll be fun. Something to watch. I I love being able to so I, I work with kids. And mm-hmm. talking baseball with kids now because the kids are excited. Like yeah. they don't watch the whole 162. They're right. They're like the oh my like they'll be like, hey, Nick, like what was the score? And I was like, oh, this. They're like, did Devers do anything? And I'm like, well, actually, he hit a ball. Yeah. It was great. Devers has been awesome. Yeah. So there were two outs last night. And I was like, oh, there's two outs with with two on. I'll go take my dog out and then I'll watch the second half of the inning. I'm walking and I just hear someone say, let's fucking go <laughs> in the, in like their window. I was like, Oh damn. Devers went deep. Didn't he? Yep. <laughs> so that's, so that's on me. All right. Well, little surprise for the viewers. It's only us two tonight. Two man show. It's a two man show. So that means I only need to think of one question. I don't know. So this is kind of somewhat topical. If Dave was here, he'd say, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but and it kind of has to do with your affiliation. Okay. With the Cubs. So we have a celebrity fan. That celebrity fan is John Cusack. Did you yes. see the video online with one of the Barstool guys to, you, like, berating I John Cusack? I have. And actually, Cusack had a pretty good rebuttal. But, <laughs> he did. but I will side with White Sox Davis, we were talking about from Barstool. You can't just bandwagon two different baseball teams. No, you you really can't. You know, if you want to sit in your in your couch at home and root for the White Sox, go for it. 
But, but at this point, go yeah. to a game. <laughs> you can't show up to another team, the like White Sox game, as you were just on the north side five years ago rooting on a World Series. Yeah. So it's tough for me because I only have like the one. So would you ever consider doing that? I mean, I'll sit at my house. My yeah, house, so yeah. my, my, my a little bit different too. My whole family is White Sox fans. Okay, so you can root with your family. That's, yes, that's I root is. for them just so my family will be happy. You know what I mean? My brother, yeah. my my dad, my uncle, or my grandpa, they are all White Sox fans. So if the White Sox are you know going to make a World Series and win, that's great for them. But yep. in my, inside, deep down inside, I'm like, oh, man. Today yeah. I'm, there's a little bit of relief, sigh of relief that yeah. the White Sox did get eliminated. So my question is, who is your favorite celebrity fan, if you have Oh, I mean, Vince Vaughn. I think it has to be. Is he Cubbies? Yeah. Yeah. All Chicago. Vince, Vince Vaughn. Vaughn. Yeah. I'm obsessed with every every one of Vince Vaughn's movies. He plays the same like character every time, like the right. oh shucks type of guy that like you root for, like right. kind of a schmuck, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's. I'm trying to think that movie that is in with Jennifer Aniston. Failure mm. to launch? No, that's McConaughey. I can't think of it. I'll tell my about like they break up and all this stuff. But like yeah. at the beginning of that movie, he meets Jennifer Aniston, his girlfriend in the movie, at a Wrigley Field. Uh, uh, at a oh, day game. that's yeah. cool. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, I really like the internship. I don't know why. Oh, I, is that with Owen Wilson? I think. Yeah, right? Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn. Yeah. I don't know who my favorite celebrity fan would be. Like when I go to Celtics, it's more at Celtics games that they'll put them on like the big screen. Okay. And like. If like Kraft is there, yeah, or Belichick, it's just absolutely ridiculous. But like the best like celebrity celebrity would be like Mark Wall, which is like fine. Yeah, like cool. yeah, he's all right. He's he's like <laughs> too much of a Boston guy. Like no one's that Boston over the top, right? Yeah. <laughs> he's Calm actually not a great guy either. He he like made a homeless guy blind. He oh, beat up what? a guy when he was like young, <laughs> and he became blind. Wow, that's. That's a dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our perfect draft today, since it's the only the two of us, and I suggested this perfect draft a couple weeks ago, but Dave said he didn't know any fictional base baseball player. Mm-hmm. So this one will be fairly easy because just the two of us. So we'll, so I'll give you first, and then I get two, then you get one. Okay. All right. So who do you take, Jason? So I thought of a lot of guys, yeah. and then I thought, do I want to do it as who would be the best baseball player, or who do I have, you know, more of a tie to with because it's my favorite, more of my favorite movies. And I feel like I went yeah. more with the, the movie that I enjoy watching the okay. most, yep. and those kind of characters in those movies more than so, like, yeah. and, you and know. Actually, like, I, I, I have some children on mine. So. Yeah, so it's like, you know, I could have easily gone Hobbs from, you know, the, the Natural and been like, this guy yeah. is the best yeah. baseball he would, he would, he would be good. Yeah, exactly. But I'm gonna go with more of the fun, uh, you know, right. favorite movie type thing. So my first, the one one overall, I'm gonna go with uh, Benny the Jet Rodriguez from San Juan. Yep. Oh, hold on, actually. Uh, yeah, hold on. Okay. okay. My all time favorite, uh, you know, baseball movie is as childish yet as it is. Still I got one my of the PF flyers right here. Oh, there we go. See. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's more like I said, it's like a childish movie, but it's just one of those movies, just. Classic baseball movie doesn't have to do anything with the major leagues other than at the yeah, end no. it supposedly does yeah. make the majors, but yeah, so he's my one one. That was gonna be my, my one one, so that was the correct pick. Oh, see, perfect, yeah, perfect. All right. one one. So I'm gonna go down my list. Uh, this is gonna be an animated guy, okay? The name is Pablo Sanchez. Oh, are you familiar baseball? with it? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's he was the goat of the game, he is the goat, he is my goat. He will. <laughs> I mean, that's a great one, too, right there. All right. And um, next, I'll go with Crash Davis. From, okay. Uh, He's on my list. Bull Durham. Yep. I just, another... I just saw that movie for the first time, like, within the last, like, nine months. It was very oh, good. Yeah, you really root, root for him. He's kind of yeah. a schmuck. <laughs> yeah. I guess I just like schmucks. Yeah. No, it's a great movie. It's a good character. He's actually on my list. He was my... Third ranked, which is awesome because yeah. you didn't pick my second. So for my second pick, I am going to go with Willie Mays Hayes from Major League. I've never seen that. Oh, yeah. Man. I don't think I've seen the majority of the people you're going to pick. 
I mean, that's not true, but maybe. The but yeah, I mean, what you mentioned. how do you not like Willie Mays Hayes? Um, I would highly recommend Major League. Okay. The first one over the second one. Both of them are good, but the first one is way better than the second. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, he kind of plays that, like, flashy center fielder, uh, you know, always wants to be stealing bases, hitting home runs. Yeah. And, you know, the coach is like, hey, you're a leadoff hitter, man. You don't hit home runs. Yeah, okay. So it's just a great character. Um, they prank him at the beginning of spring training. In the middle of the night, they bring his bed out. Not too many spoilers, but they bring his bed out to the middle of the fields. Gets woken up by the sprinklers. Go watch the movie. It's great. And then, so right, I'll go back to back. Since you took Chris Dav- uh, Crash Davis, I'm going to go with maybe a little well unknown. Another child, I guess you could say, but uh, Kelly Leak from the Bad News Bears. He okay, was just I was like, just really nervous because I'm picking a child next. <laughs> okay, maybe we, this guy's an adolescent. We'll call him, but uh, yeah, he was the guy that just he was the rebel of the town, man. But he was the best athlete. You know, he drove around on a motorcycle, smoked cigarettes. Um, you know, this okay. is also a movie that came out, I think, like in the '60s or '70s. So that's probably not. Yeah, that, I haven't seen this one. Either. Not that uncommon, but uh, yeah, he was the kid that he was the best on the team. If you know the movie premise, it's like a bunch of ragtag kids that can't play baseball, but he can. So, you know, he played center field. The ball would go to left field. He'd just run over and just catch the ball right in front of the little kid's face because they needed to get out. Um, so, yeah, just a great character I thought was, um, you know, one of the movies yeah. I like watching growing up. Um, yeah, so fuck. I'll I go with those two. Um, so I'll go – I'm going to go with G-Baby from Hardball. Okay. Have you seen Har- Hardball? I think we're talk to me about, talk to me about it. What is it? I think uh, that sounds from Reeves. He's a degenerate gambler, and then he like bets on his little league team that he coaches to win. Oh, okay, yes, I do and know the movie. I don't know the characters. And then, and then he's dies. yeah, like it's kind of like the Mighty Ducks of baseball. Like he's he's like sentenced to like yes, like community coach little yeah. yeah right. Okay, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. But incredibly sad, cry my eyes out every time. Um. Next, I'm gonna go with Kenny Powers. Oh, he's you know he was. Guy. I debated putting him as my one-one, um, because that's just a great character, a great show. Um, have I mean, you? How seen do you not show? like? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, so this is gonna. I'm gonna just ask you a question. Have you seen like all of it? Yep. If I told you, let the boy watch. Will you know exactly what I'm talking about? Yes. With Will Ferrell. Yes. Oh my, every, I literally will just like say to my girlfriend, I'll be like, my, my, my plums. And she my plums. gets so mad. A blue <laughs> shoe. <laughs> Let the boy watch. Yeah. I'll, I'll just name throw it like, on uh, like YouTube, like on my TV, just like that scene with Craig, Craig Robinson. Yeah. And, and they just, uh, it's so good every time. So good, man. So good. Oh. Great show. I, I'm actually upset that I, didn't put him higher on my list. Just knowing the things that you were taking, I'm like, oh, Nick's going to take him. But he didn't. Yeah, it's not as early as I thought. Yeah. All right. So you that's your four. Left, left over? Just. Well, I have one more pick, right? Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So go, and then we'll yeah. can just shoot through our leftovers because there's probably some good ones. Oh, man. So many good ones left. Well, not so many good ones, but a couple good ones. I think I'm going to go with uh, Jack Parkman from Major League Two. He's like this, is like really. Charlie? What's up? Is 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 that the Charlie Sheen movie? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Um, same. But this one's this one's from the second one. Willie Mays Hayes was from the first. Jack Parker's okay. from second. He's this like super cocky, just masher catcher. Um, you know, there's this scene where like he gets up to bat and he has this little stance when he gets in the bot the batter's box, just real cocky. You know, big asshole mm-hmm. in the movie. It's just a great character. So I'm gonna go with him. And my last right. my last pick. And then what we got left over? I've got um Stan Ross from Mr. 3000. I really yeah. like Mr. 3000 too. And uh, too. and then the young guy, uh Studebaker or something. Yeah, something, something like, like that. And you're talking about, yeah, the guy that's like coming up to like take his place. Yep. A couple good ones um, I have left off here. Um, I mean another Stan like guy. How do you not like Hamilton Porter? Yep. Um, just some other random ones too. Dottie Henson from the League of Their Own. Oh, yeah, Keenan good Davis's one. Character, yeah, great one. Um, Henry Rowan Gardner, Rookie of the Year. Haven't seen that movie. Oh, what that guy? Seen with... any oh man, that's like the Cubs guy where like he, you know, 
He breaks oh, his arm. Oh, is that the kid? That yeah, throws he his breaks his arm and he throws it like 100 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. that's a good one. Um, Ryan Dunn from Summer Catch. I, I, oh, I, yeah. Like, that I love me a rom com and it's based down the Cape. It's really just yeah, like I love that movie, man. I actually I actually thought about putting him on there, but I'm like, is this is this too and then, not and, cool and then enough? Griffey just takes him deep at the end? Like Yeah. It's <laughs> such a great movie, man. Oh, this, like I guess that I thought about putting him on there. The deal is is mowing a lawn. Yep. The great, great nine year old me. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> that was it from, Oh, and then I have John Dowd. Do you know who John Dowd is? No. So MVP baseball, 2004. Okay. Yep. They weren't allowed to use Barry Bonds because he wasn't in the players association or, or something like that. So they created a fake white guy named John Dowd who would just hit absolute tanks. Had the same like attributes. If there was a Barry Bonds. And he was just a nondescript white guy. That's hilarious. It's kind of like how the games used to be when Michael Jordan was around, right? He was never in any basketball games for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah, and... it, it is weird how, like, I don't know how it works. Like, I, if yeah. there's like, a contract thing. Hold on. I have a picture of John Dowd. This is probably going to not translate well. Uh, no, it's not bad. It's literally just a oh, non- on the Giants and everything, too? That's hilarious. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And yeah, like, he's... it was a cheat code. If it was like a three-two pitch and you bunted, it would just go out. <laughs> it made no sense. That's hilarious. All right, what do we got next? Oh, new the 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 new segment, which I thought of an I which I thought of a name for. I forgot to tell Dave, so it's not going to come on the scroll thing. That's fine. It can be I one of those like we break out every once in a while over this off season. Yeah, I think I want to I want to call it Deep Dynasty Dive, which will be Triple D. Shout okay. out, Guy, Guy, Guy Fietti. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so probably won't be coming for our segment name, right? I mean, hopefully he will. Oh, whoa, whoa! We got look some at behind this. the scenes action going on. Deep Triple dynasty D. dives. Let's do it. Here we go. All right. So the point of this segment is we are going to pick a team a week, and or like when we have, we'll eventually get through all thirty, hopefully. Yeah. And pick a pitcher, a hitter, and a prospect that we that we're looking closer to for next year. So, obviously, who are we starting with? The hottest team in baseball. The hottest team in baseball, the Boston Red Sox. I will let you go first. We will go with hitter first. Okay. And it's funny because I was going to pick this guy. Oh, yeah. And, How do you not, right? And it was funny because, well, just just go and then, and then we'll talk. So, okay. take it away, my guy. So the hitter that I am going to be bringing up about the Red Sox is actually someone that you may, maybe if you're not out, you know too familiar with Boston in their uh, situation is uh, Kyle Schwarber and he's actually is, is under contract next year. I mean, maybe he is? People, yes, he is uh, going to be a Boston Red Sox. I think he is. I don't think he is. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure because like the According big thing to... on talk radio is like I'm 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 going to look okay, it up. Look it up. I looked under. I looked up uh, his contract under Spot Track, and he's under contract until 2023. I'd lose my mind. Check it out. Right. Let me know yeah. because he did just sign as a free agent, right? Or was he? Right. I'm not sure. But check it out. I'm pretty sure he's under contract next year. Is that 2022? Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. fucking go. Told you, man. Nice. All right, go. So That's look at see, as you can see, not many people know that he is going to be a Boston Red Sox. Uh, you know, barring any sort of trade or anything, he will be under contract with Boston next year. Um, so yeah, um, how can you not you know get on board with this guy? Since joining the Red Sox, um, he slashed 291, 435, 522, seven home runs and 34 runs scored and 18 runs batted in. I think that's since like we'll call it the beginning of August. Yeah. Um, I think the original date was like August 7th or something like that, but uh, 19 walk, 19 percent walk rate. Had almost a one to one K to walk rate. Um, he's also, um, you know, both his average and max exit velocity are in the top ten percent of the league. Um, he's also got a 551 X slug, which was in the 93rd percentile. These are all, um, you know, season. Those were season long stats. And also, if you look back, you know, just kind of, you know, what his expected home runs were. Um, in 2019, when he was with the Cubs, if he would have played all those games at Fenway, he would have had 44 home runs, actually. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, obviously, that short right porch is going to be a huge benefit 
Um, you know, you're going to be getting uh, 81 games there. So that's going to be huge for uh, Schwarber going forward. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, just proving, you know, what even in October right now, right, is, is postseason. This guy's just like the postseason king. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, that that uh, wild card game, another uh, home run off of Garrett Cole, which he'll be seeing a lot of next year. Um, so yeah, clearly he has no uh, fear of Garrett Cole. So it turns um, out it's a mutual option. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So, so probably not here. Yeah, that's true. But I'm hopeful. I just don't I'm, know where that is. As of right now, I'm saying he he will be there. Okay. All right. You heard it first. I'm not a Boston Red Sox insider, but it's a pretty favorable contract, man. I think it's like eleven million dollars or something like that. So but that's what he wants to say for that amount of this money. This is true. This is true. Um did, I guess did we'll you see. see the other day don't you have you, to airmailed one? To, to, to first base i did not so it was a ground ball to first like and the pitcher had to cover and he flipped it and it went like five feet over the guy's head wow but then the next play he got it and he tipped his cap to the crowd bowed and the whole crowd just erupted <laughs> it was i'll have to send you the video it was it was fucking great he's awesome man dude you're telling me, man. And they, if he does leave Boston, he still has my stamp of approval as a deep dynasty dive um, to go ahead and uh, that's a hitter you should be looking for. Yeah, the, the issue is, is they have no place to put the guy. Yeah. Unless they my question. Really as, as a Red Sox fan, let me tell you this. Or, you know, Let me just ask you this. Who would you rather have, Renfro or Schwarber? Well, funny you ask. Good segue, right? Because right now. It's it's like you knew. We're we're gonna talk Hunter Renfro. And I've said it a few times. Knicks dig the long ball. And that's what he does. He hits bombs. And as an absolute cannon. Almost cost him the, the, the game last night because he made a stupid throw to home, but that's neither here nor there. So Hunter still 29. How old is Ren how old is uh Schwarber? 20. He's gotta be close to 30, right? Yeah, maybe 27, I think. He was a college bat, so he's probably a little bit he's, He'll be 29 for, for ne- next year, so we'll call that even. Okay. Um, he has far better on-base skills than, than Hunter Ren- Renfro does. So I, would, I, 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 would, I think I would pick him easily. Hunter is with the Sox for another two years, I think, before our arbitration. Okay. That was – this was a perfect signing from Bloom, honestly. Like, this, this is a guy that just – could always hit bombs, but just never really like stuck. Like he hit like 25, strike out a bunch, but he seems to be doing a lot better, which is awesome. His max as exit velocity tops in the league. Awesome. Love it. And most of all, he's a part of one of those smart organizations like the Boston Red Sox. Hi, I'm Bloom. Genius. Love the guy. Can't wait to see what's next. But I would take. Kyle Schwarber over Renfro. You? Well, yeah, but again, like a lot of the contract, like you said, he, you know, Renfro's arbitration eligible. So yeah. he's obviously the cheaper option, but yeah, I think Schwarber is the better player. Yeah. I mean, Renfro is probably better at defense, but yes, absolutely. Like, honestly, I would pick Schwarber over Mar- Mar- Martinez. Like, I'd prefer him as my DH over JD. Sure, but doesn't JD have like, um, he's that. a he's a player option. He'll probably take it. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's, it's right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Next, before we get yelled at for going too late, we're gonna go with right, the let's, pitchers. Yeah, let's get I'll it going start here. With this one, go for it. This is just total recency bias. Just Nick Pavetta. Yeah. JD over Schwarbs all day. Eh, you don't know what you're talking about fantasy six pack. <laughs> you don't know shit, but. Nick Pavetta, I don't – again, I don't know if you're watching these games. Obviously, you're not watching them like I'm watching them because it's the Red Sox. But he's been absolutely nails this postseason. He's been being awesome. He has a great first name. Um, he's got a five-pitch mix, throws in the, in the mid-90s. We gave up nothing for him to, from, from the Phillies. We traded uh, Workman, who ended up coming back. And then mm-hmm. some other jabroni reliever. Who gives a fuck? 
his ERA this year was in the mid fours, which obviously would like to get better than that. But his profile with the with the five pitch mix, with the smart organization, like like I said, I think he has an opportunity to be like a good, a great four in your pitching staff on your team, and like a good three. If he's anything higher than that, you're not a good team. But yeah, I'm excited about him just because he was so cheap. Nice yeah. Let's say, would you give up a draft pick? Um. Yeah. Like probably the, like a third or a second, depending on where the picks land. Yeah. I mean, the good thing with Pavetta, I mean, he's always had that strikeout capability. Yeah. Right? He's just always been inconsistent with Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Um. He's always, you know, he's shown signs of life. Like, oh man, this guy could be like really legit. He's always had like a K of per nine over at least one per nine. Um if sometimes even higher than that, I think. Yeah. Um, so, you know, he's always kind of been that, like, fringe SP3. Um, so, yeah, I think you could definitely give up a, a draft pick for him. Especially in, you know, everyone, you know, it's kind of hard to judge draft picks in um, yeah. fantasy baseball because you could pick a guy in the first round and it could be nothing. Yeah. yeah, that's true, right. too. I mean, if you're, in a, if you're, like, in that mid-range or getting ready to win now, give up those draft picks. Yeah, be for, for a proven pitcher, a lot like a semi-proven pitcher. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just cool seeing those electric moments when, like, you get a K to end a inning and you're, like, pumped up and yeah. the crowd's going nuts. So that's mostly why I'm going here. Who did you go with? Probably so somebody someone, that I really like. Yeah, I mean, this was a little bit borderline of what, you know, do we want to go prospect or hitter or pitcher with this one? I'm going to go with the pitcher with this one, and I'm going to go Tanner Houck. Uh, I mean, still only 25-year-old. is like, basically having a great season. Uh, I wouldn't call it quite a breakout yet, but since being a starter and since 2020, uh, 2970 RA, 1.07 whip, 94 strikeouts and 75 innings pitch. I think you guys there in Boston like to kind of call him like uh, Chris Sale Jr. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I kind of heard him. And whip. Yeah. Wow. Some of those, it's kind of a stretch of a comparison, but I like it. Um, the side by side is fun. Yeah, exactly. I mean, great strikeout pitcher. If he could just cut back on the walks a little bit, which yeah. he has done, and it's kind of hard to take 2020 stats with, you know, what it is what it is, but his walk rate was cut in half this year. Went from 14 last year down to seven this year, which is still a little high. Um, I'd like to see it cut down even more, but, you know, I'll take seven at this point. He's still young. Yeah, um, he, He's doing it by attacking hitters. He's increased his first pitch strike rate since 2020. He also saw his uh, CSW increase as well, 5%, up to almost – is a respectable 30% in 2021. So I think, you know, if he can get continue getting the starts and the production, um, this guy's lights out. You know, he's he's kind of a bad outs. man, too. He's kind of scared. Like, that's that's kind of the sale thing, too. Right. He's, like, he's up there, and, like, you don't you want to get that madman approach. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Intimidates hitters, you know. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to go with Hauk as my uh, pitcher to be that. uh, that's grabbing my from the Red Sox. All right, now let's get a prospect, Jason. You can kick it off, and I'll finish it off. Sure. This one, you know, this one's maybe a little bit more uh, known, but it's you know still worth bringing up. But uh, K- Tristan Cassis, uh, former first round pick in 2018, Hell yeah. had a great 2019. Obviously, no 2020, and then he followed that up with another great season this year. And not only that, but this season was in the upper minors. He saw time at both Double A and Triple A. Uh, he finished the season combined with those two leagues with 14 homers. 59 RBI, 63 runs, and batted 280. Um, and he was an Olympian. There we go, even better. His biggest skills, obviously, is that getting on base, walks a ton, doesn't strike out often. Uh, he could obviously develop into a really good hitter for Boston. If you can increase that power, even a little bit more, even just get it up to like, you know, 20, 25 hitter, uh, 20 home run hitter. Um, you know, right now, like I said, he's more of a well known prospect, so his price yeah. could be kind of high right now, but. It could get even higher, you know, come next year or so, or even this offseason. Um, great corner infielder to kind of maybe yeah. take into If I can get somewhere between Joey Votto and Freddie Freeman, woo, I realize I just said like two. That's, that's a pretty players. high ceiling, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just made a super player. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> John Dowd all over again. Yeah. But yeah, but, I guess this is a good one. Yeah. That'd be sick. <laughs> Poor Bobby Dobbin. Or, or. Oh man! All right, I'm gonna finish off with somebody that was actually in, also in the Nick Pavetta trade. His name is Corey Siebold, right? Yes, it was. <laughs> he he came over from the Phillies in the same deal. Um, 
he's a little bit lesser known, but his ETA is probably next year. I think Cassis might even be next year at some point, depending on like where they're at. But he's yeah, it's weird. Um, they sometimes will take their time with prospects. Good. Yeah. But then other times, I guess it all depends on what their you know plan of attack is. But. Yeah, because like, like people here are like sign Rizzo, and I'm like, no, we got Cassis coming up. Sorry. All right, Corey. <laughs> I'm really excited about Tristan Cassis. Yeah, no worries. Um, so Seabold over a couple levels was mid threes ERA, six sixty four Ks in fifty nine innings, which obviously you want more innings, but he got shut down towards the end of the year. Kenny Powers is better than Connor Siebel. You are correct. hundred percent. Yeah. One thousand. Um, he had a very nice whip of 1.08, which is good. I would have loved to have thrown out an advanced stat for you guys, but as you guys well know, I'm not great at those. And I don't even know where to, how do you find the, the minor league? Cause they're not on baseball. So it's hard because well, that's because the problem is a lot of the baseball uh, minor league stadiums don't have the capability of doing uh, oh, a lot okay. of the advanced stats. I think there's like it's kind of hard, man. I think there's only a couple stadiums, and a lot of them are like I think the Florida, the 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 shrimps, I think have it, and then I'm not sure. There's not a lot of stadiums that have the advanced okay. uh, metrics. So, um, but yeah, this is this is a guy that should be relatively easy for you to get. He's like he's I think Sox prospects has him like. Probably somewhere like towards the end of the top 10, maybe top 15. But mm. he's someone that I would look out for next year just because of a proximity thing. And that the starting rotation for the Red Sox isn't good. Like, right. There's a lot of spots. Like, I, I don't trust giving Eduardo Rod, Rodriguez money next year. Like, you can't. Mm-hmm. It's like he, he pitched well last night, but like, I wasn't expecting him to. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of spots in that road rotation, and if he can show up, maybe he steals one out of spring training. I doubt it because guys like Hawk, um, there's talk that they want Whitlock to be a starter, which would be sick, but, like, he's elite in the pen, so maybe just keep him that way. I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a great uh, – that's definitely a nice um, nice pull for uh, dynasty – deep dynasty dives. Triple D, man. Yeah, triple D, yeah. Um, so next week, let's go over the Cubbies next next week. You, you like like that idea? Might as well keep the uh, hometown f- love going, right? Yeah. I don't know if Dave will be back. Maybe we did too well of a job. I doubt it. He he did say to keep it under thirty, and we're at thirty two. Oh no! And if it wasn't about the Red Sox, we would have been done like six minutes ago. Or if we wouldn't have gone such in depth into our perfect draft, right? That I think that was the best perfect draft we had, honestly. <laughs> Um, Dave equals God forever. Okay. I wonder if Dave's the one making these comments. I think it is. Dave, if, if it is you, can you please just give me one name that we missed on our perfect draft? He's just going to write no. It's going to be silent because it's not Dave. Also, I need to get some credit here. I ordered a, <laughs> a buffalo chicken salad and did not eat any of it. So as soon as Probably we go off, dinner time. I am going to eat. I also need to pick my girlfriend up from the airport at 10.30 tonight. So that's a delight. You're a fun – you got a busy night tonight. I have a busy night, man. Uh, I wish I had beer, but I just got some seltzer wine. So do you have anything All to right. add to me, Jace? Any, any shout-outs, anything you got to do? Nope, just uh, RIP White Sox season. That's tough. Yo, I bet on them today too. Not good. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. 33 right, boys. See ya. Peace. See ya. I don't know how to.